Hello and welcome to section 2 of the course. In the previous section, we discussed about scientific plotting in R. In this section, we are going to talk about using the dataset we imported in the first section for testing the graphical capabilities of R. For this, we will use graphical library ggplot2, which makes scientific plotting very easy and intuitive. We will cover all of the most basic types of scientific plots. We will start with plotting the variables distributions with histograms and box plots. Then we will cover bar charts, scatter plot, and time series. We will conclude by presenting ways to deal with uncertainty in plots. In the first video of the section, we are going to use histograms to plot the distribution of our variables. In this video, we will cover the most basic way of plotting histograms in ggplot2 and also create elegant visualizations. Also, we will use faceting to show multiple histogram. For creating a histogram, the range of the variable is divided into small non-overlapping intervals or bins, which are plotted as vertical bars. For each bin, the number of elements within its range is calculated and plotted as the height of the bars on the y-axis. This is referred to as frequency. Great, now that we have covered the theory, we can finally start coding. Open activity 2.1 in RStudio. Run the first line of code to load ggplot2. Set the working directory and load the air pollution data from your hard disk, as we saw in the first section. We can take a look at the structure of the data using the function str. In this dataset, we have five continuous numerical variables temperature, barometric pressure, CO, NO2, and SO2. When we start a data analysis, it is always good to graphically check our variables by plotting their distribution. ggtoplot uses a simple syntax that allows us to add elements to the plot by literally summing additional information to the original plot call. In lines 20 and 21, you can see a basic syntax to draw a simple histogram with the distribution of the variable NO2. The first line is always needed to start plotting with ggplot2. It allows us to tell R what data and aesthetics to use for the following functions. Aesthetics are the key of the plotting call and change depending on what we want to plot afterwards. In this case, we just need to specify the variable x, since we are plotting a single variable histogram. Nice, right? With just two lines of code, we were able to create this professional looking plot. As you can see, we did not specify any option within the call to the function geome histogram. This is the beauty of ggplot2, because with very few lines of code, we can still produce beautiful results by using its default settings. Now that we explored the basics of ggplot2, we can start making even more complex visualizations. In the previous plot, we used all the observations of NO2 in our dataset to plot its distribution. This is useful to determine the average distribution across all the states. However, there may be cases in which we are more interested in comparing the distribution in each state separately to see which is the most polluted. For achieving this, we can use the function facetwrap to specify that we want to divide our dataset by state. This function takes a categorical variable and automatically creates one plot for each category. In this case, it created one histogram for each state, which is the categorical variable. As you can see, once again, ggplot2 took care of most of the graphical details. For example, setting a title for each plot based on the state. This allowed us to create elegant and relatively complex plots with very few lines of code. Great! So in this video, we talked about histograms and we showed how simple is the R syntax to create them in ggplot2.